Good afternoon, Mr. Courage. How are you doing today? Uh, yeah, I'm actually supposed to be meeting with um, Dr. Mahash Warren today. I don't know if you know if he'll be coming in. Ah, yes. Unfortunately, uh, Dr. Mahash Warren couldn't make it in today. Um, I'm his replacement. <laughs> replacement therapist. How does that work? Doesn't that like conflict with doctor-patient privacy? Well, yes, kind of yes, but um, you already paid for the session, and as you know, uh, we have a stringent no refund policy, so you're free to leave although i would not suggest it because it was quite a hefty sum these therapy sessions are not cheap you know ah where are my manners i am dr Wu, henry Wu. actually no i can't shake your hand uh we don't have the budget to put two people shaking hands on camera uh it's a cgi thing so just pretend i shook your hand and uh yeah i guess we could go ahead with the session okay uh uh, well, okay, Let, let's get this show on the road, shall we? Okay. So, Courage, how was your week? My week was great, actually. Uh, last week, I met up with my friend, Tania, from Waffle House. We haven't seen in a long time. Just bite it. Mango? Yes, just yeah, bite you addicted it. to mangoes? <laughs> I might be. Uh, it's crazy, actually. I was on Snapchat, and I saw her story, and it was this thing about love and uh, spirituality. So, I swapped up. And we ended up making a video together. So that was crazy. Um, yeah. Oh, you make videos? Yeah, oh. actually I do. I make I make YouTube videos, which which reminds me. Um, thank you to everybody that watched the last video, Taylor Bossing Snellville. It, it meant a lot that so many people enjoyed it. Um, thank you guys for the support. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, if you don't mind, hit the like button on this video. Subscribe because it helps. And maybe you won't miss out on the next video I post. And if you're feeling extra generous, leave a comment down below. Something more than just nice video, great video. Tell me the part you liked, the part you didn't like. Tell me what inspired you. I respond to every comment until I become famous. Then I, will, I won't respond to every comment, obviously, because I'll be famous. But, you know, while you have me, uh, leave a comment down below and I'll make sure I respond to you. Um, thank you again. Uh, let's get back to the video. What was that? What was what? That you were just talking to yourself. What was that? Oh no, I wasn't talking to myself. I was talking to the cameras right there. It's, oh, you don't see, actually. There's cameras all over the place. Let me ask you a serious question. Do you do you think there are always cameras recording you? Is that like your your life? Mostly yes, except when I'm asleep. And uh, oh yeah, when I'm in the shower. There's no cameras in the shower. But mostly yes, there's cameras everywhere. Wow. Okay, so uh, clearly obsessed with himself well go on you were telling me about your week <laughs> oh where was i okay so the video was basically uh a day in the life with tania and so she in the morning she took me out to this boxing gym that she has a membership to i guess and the owner was kind enough to let us shoot the video in there so we made this uh quick montage uh it, it came out nice actually here let me show you a video and it's funny because as soon as I registered for that boxing class, he hit me up and was like, um, are you coming tomorrow? And I was like, okay, bet. I'm not supposed to be at this boxing class. I, I definitely didn't want to go. Anyway. Oh,
to the next stop. What, Lenora? Or you, you want to go yeah, get Lenora. some food first? No, nah, no food. Oh. Wow. That was. That that was that was something. Um. I'm, and I'm not. I'm not just saying that. Uh. How how long did it take you to make that video? Um. <laughs> it took a couple of months actually to get the video finished. So. A couple of. <laughs> well, I mean, in that case, it's a uh, it's much less impressive. But carry on. The rest of my week was uh, pretty uneventful. There was a whole day I spent actually recording a study session on a rainy afternoon. So uh, it was it was actually relaxing. <laughs> I don't think I got much work done that day. But um, there was also a video on that. <laughs> Was that the day before that we went to play basketball me prince kanu and andre um it, it, the park was mostly empty so we played 2v2 the whole time uh they've actually been asking me when the video is going to come out so yeah the video is finally ready i'm glad i'm able to share with them but when i made this video we were trash so this is the power of of, of movie magic i was able to make us look like all stars all our shots went in <laughs> So we're at the park right now. I'm about to play quick uh, 2v2 with the boys. So let's see how that turns out. There is a life I lead in the city. Hurry in to cut my teeth. I can take what I need to get by. It doesn't make it easy. The other piece of my heart moves so Somewhere in the great unknown When I return from the afterglow Do you carry me like I am whole again? Wait, hold on Be together, take me back where I belong I want it all I had a feeling but the feeling is all Take me back where I belong I want it all I had a feeling but the feeling is all gone What's going on, man? You hit me on your shots, you're losing. Uh, 
<laughs> what does that say? What, what does that tell you? What does that tell you? <laughs> it's me, man. What are you saying about you, I'm bro? I'm defeated, my guy. in the bag. Me? The Nigerians. So why you guys, why you guys, you said the Nigerians. <laughs> Oh, guys, darko again. This guy dyed his hair again. Oh, so you're blonde? No. So if they got time, dyed his hair would not cut hair. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I call those? Devil's biscuits. Devil's biscuits. How you missing a plastic spoon, bro? It's straight from the factory. I'll break that land. Keep it the day in the life of favor. Before my YouTube attempt. Get up! So she For terrible. what? Drink my jeans now. <laughs> Get up! Oh, I don't have Get it. Up. I don't care. Where are Get my jeans? Stop. Where are my jeans, Divine? I took it off this morning. Where are my jeans? I don't know. Just this five. What is it? And then the twins. The twins, Teresa and Marissa. She said, yeah, like that's her name. What's the other twin's name? I said, yeah, Teresa. Who do you talk to? Teresa and who? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I need to talk to you, man. Hey, Prince, I gotta talk to you. <laughs> About what? It's a complete, wa complete waste of time. <laughs> now we are at Chili's. We also go to Papa John's. I'm getting some food. <laughs> Courage, I have to say, your videos seem awfully poetic. Uh, have you by any chance thought about writing poetry? I have actually. There's a, um, there's a collection of poems I've been putting together for like a, f a few months now. And um, last week, I think, uh, Namdi and I, we made this short film inspired by that collection. Um, it's called Poems About Love. And uh, I, I think it came out well. I, I try not to, um, like, be impressed by the stuff I make. But I, I feel like this one was, it, it was a personal project. And uh, I feel like it came out well.私はこの奇妙な中間のステージにいる。遠すぎてよく見えない。近すぎてよく見えない。どこかに取り残されてしまった。その光量とした中間地点に頻繁に切り離された自分の能力は知っている。恋に落ちたり、落ちなかったり、そしてある意味私と同じような傾向があるのではないかって考えると恐ろしい。ある時は情熱的に夢中になり、そしてまたある時は同じように遠くへ。こんにちはという方法を考
息を潜めて空気を求めてあえぎ何もない小さなポケットの中で生きるみたい今日も昨日と同じように過ごせたらと思うあなたが私のことをどう思っているのか全くわからないけど少なくともその時は何か確信があった愛に失敗する私を見るには忍耐のない心にテントを張るのが怖い本気で考えると少し痛い人にありがちなあの感じ私のすべてを無言で注ぎどうにかしてあなたに届くようにとおなじみの返事を期待しても何も返ってこないかもっと悪いことにあまりに曖昧な何かを受け取ることになる私は頻繁に自分が待っていることに気づく辛抱強く不安な気持ちで落ち着かず息もつかずにあなたは私に垣間見せてくれる息を飲むような幻想的で耐え難いほど恐ろしい何か新しいものを月並みな言い方だけど大勢の人がいる部屋でも私はあなたのことを完全に意識しているあなたの動きあなたの会話あなたのマナーすべてを全くすべてを These are the links I have to go to get you to subscribe. I'm literally jumping out the screen. I don't know what else you could want me to do. So please comment, like, and、uh, subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate that.、Uh, oh gosh, this is definitely dangerous. Don't try this at home, kids. I am a trained professional. Oh gosh, how do I get down? Ah! Ah, now it makes sense. What? <laughs> What makes sense? Let, let me ask you, Courage. Are you talking to anyone right now? I, I, I don't know. The reason I, I ask is because I noticed,、um, I noticed something in, in all your poems.、Uh, your views on love are childish. How, how can you say it's childish, though? If, If these are my emotions, like this is the stuff I'm feeling, it's, this, it's the situation I'm in. It's not, like, it's not like I chose to feel this way. It's like, how, how can you call it childish? I don't think you understand. There's, there's something lurking in your poems. Do you have any idea what that is? It's fear, courage. In, in every line, I can sense your fear. And it's fueled, I believe, by this fantastical notion of love. That you have, like it's a, it's, a, it's a power that's out of your control. Do you follow so far? And, and now you believe at any moment that you, you could lose this feeling, and that, that scares you, doesn't it? Courage, love is not some autonomous force, it's, it's an act of will. It's accompanied by emotions, not fueled by it, and those emotions lead to actions. In favor of its object. But you have to make that choice. You have to choose love. And the emotions, you don't tell them when to come, but you tell them when to leave. When it's fueled by will and not 
emotions. There's less fear, there's more certainty in what you choose and not what you feel. <laughs> I can see why they I can see why they pay you guys all this money. So, what do you make of this? I don't know. At, at the end of the day, I don't want people to value me based on the stuff that I do or like the fact that I make cool videos or that I am funny, I dress nice. All, all those things are good and fine, but I, I want people to like me for who I am and the person I end up with, whoever that, that may be, I want them to just like sharing the conversation with me. I want them to like me being in the room. Um, <laughs> I guess I, I, I wouldn't want to have to keep putting up a performance, you know, just just to be able to live and have somebody appreciate that. I don't know. This is probably as close to a confession as I'll get uh, for till I don't know when, but I'm not crying now. <clears throat> it's just cold in here and my nose is running, so yeah, pollen season too, so you know, allergies. Well, um. I think we've made some good progress here. Uh, we still have half an hour. So um, if you have any more wacky adventures that you'd like to tell me, I'm all ears. Yeah, there's a few more stuff that happened actually. I am OTW to a farmer's market right now to um, get some stuff because we're having a Bible study at my house tomorrow. So yeah, get in the car. Oh gosh. expect to spend that much money. Yeah, you are so no, the stuff, it, it makes me... It makes it what? Ew. See what I'm saying? No wonder. Somehow I always pick the coldest days to make these videos. Um, this is the final part of the vlog. Five months after the fact, actually, I, <laughs> this vlog started five months ago and it's just now reaching its conclusion. Um, I don't know why. I think I have to be more concise with the stuff I do. I just kept adding stuff on top and then it took so long to get to this point. But we're finally here and I'm happy. So this is the culmination of the entire video. This is the conclusion. This was the main reason I reached out to Tania in the first place. It was to have this conversation about the gospel. If you've already heard the gospel, I am happy for you. Uh, but still, hear me out. If you haven't heard the gospel before, this is the most important part of the video. Not all the flashy stuff in the beginning, not the poems or the short film. All of that was just to keep you entertained <laughs> up until this point. This is the reason why I made this video. So, uh, it's actually cold out here. I'm about to go in my car and then, uh, I'll tell you about the gospel. All right, so I shared this. And there's this thing called the three circles, right? So uh, it's hard. To, it's hard to do when I'm talking to myself. Okay, maybe not that. Maybe not that. Okay, let's try this. In the beginning, right? There was there was nothing, and then God. Oh, okay, I messed up. Okay, so in the beginning there was darkness and nothing, and then God created the heavens and the. Uh, that's very complicated to understand. Created. Oh gosh. Okay, so we all know about the story in the beginning where Adam How am I going to do this? I'm going to use these three circles to visual uh, Fudge! Ah, ah, ah.
So I want you to visualize three circles and I'm going to use these three circles to tell the story of man how man was in the presence of God, how they fell, and how they were restored back to God. So, as most people know, or maybe not most people, but some people know, and if you don't know, you're about to know, the creation of the world. In the beginning, there was nothing, and God created the heavens and the earth. He created man, and he put man in the Garden of Eden. And he gave man, Adam and Eve, the instruction to tend to the garden, and a single commandment. You can have of any tree and of anything in the garden, but of this one tree in the center, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you cannot have but adam and eve were the seed and they disobeyed god they took from that tree in the center and just like that sin came into the world sin is this thing where i do what i want and not what god wants now imagine adam and eve in that first circle where they are in perfect relationship with god as sin comes into the world god and sin cannot dwell in the same place so god cast adam and eve out of the garden of eden into the second circle which you can think of as being the world that we live in now which is broken and has this god-shaped hole that we try to fill with so many other things there are four things really that we try to fill this hole with relationships where people go into relationships to to feel something to feel complete uh, people run to riches they try and get as much money as possible so that they can feel fulfillment and you still have seen in life that when they have so much money they're still sad and empty and incomplete then there's religion where people try and follow the law as closely as possible but the thing with that is even if you fail one commandment in the law you fail it all and last but not least there is the runs which are all the quick pleasures that that you indulge in that try and satisfy you for a moment but right after that you go back to feeling broken these things are like bungee cords you know when you tie a bungee cord around your waist and you try and run as far as possible you feel free for a minute but at a point you start feeling tension and that tension keeps growing and growing until it drags you right back to where you were before so now you see us in the first circle where we're in perfect relationship with god we've been moved by sin and death into the second circle where we are broken and in need of something to save us and now we're inside the third circle justice needs to be served right so god knowing that they there was a there was a penalty that had to be paid he came and he paid that price by himself now you see the first circle and the third circle there's a there's a disconnect there we in in our brokenness cannot go up to god so god in his kindness came down to us and paid the price that we had to pay so that we could go back up to him right people will argue that they are good so i ask on what standard do you do you base your goodness now um there's god's standard which is the ten commandments the ten commandments were not just things that we had to follow and obey the ten commandments were to expose the fact that we were not good ourselves so this thing called the blames test i will take you through it b l a m e s yeah so b stands for blasphemy have you ever used god's name in vain l stands for lying have you ever told any lies in your life a stands for adultery have you ever committed adultery before and that's um sleeping with somebody that's not your wife and most of you might say no jesus himself came and said if you look upon a woman with lust then you've committed adultery in your heart have you ever murdered anyone before that's what m stands for um murder does not just mean killing somebody jesus said that if you have had hate towards your neighbor in your heart then you have committed murder e stands for exalt have you ever put anything above god and if you have committed any of the first four then that means you have exalted yourself above god s stands for stealing have you ever stolen anything before i have looked upon women with lust so i have committed adultery i have used god's name in vain i have lied and i have i have had anger towards many people so i will put a check mark behind my name every person has committed at least one of these at least one consciously or unconsciously and think about this if i gave you a glass of water and i put a tiny drop of sewage in that water would you still drink it the whole cup will be contaminated no matter how small the drop was if you knew that i put sewage in that water i don't think you would drink it um but we have to be honest with ourselves by this resume that we have we have to bring this up to a holy and righteous god and we have to say hey god this is my resume these are the stuff i've done um these are the stuff i failed to do can i get into heaven and a holy and righteous judge just like you would not allow even a drop of sewage into your cup of water would not allow a sinner into the kingdom of heaven so what's the hope that we have how can we as humans who have failed terribly come back and receive salvation well the bible says that 2000 years ago this guy by the name of jesus christ came 
and he paid the penalty for sin now the reason why god can't just wave his hand and say you know you know forget about the sin i forgive you let's just act like it never happened is because he's just so there has to be penalty there has to be a punishment for sin and we ourselves were bearing that punishment by dying and having no salvation right but jesus came he died he rose from the dead he took our sins and he gave us his righteousness and now just by believing in that we are able to receive the same righteousness that god promised all we have to do is repent and and accept god as our savior and that promise that he had becomes ours okay so now i'll ask you the question red lights green lights yellow lights where do you stand red light meaning i hear what you're saying and i have no intention of actually believing in this this is just a bunch of fairy tale uh yellow light meaning i do believe in this but i'm not at the point in my life where i'm ready to make that commitment yet green light meaning i'm, I'm fully on I'm, I'm i'm headstrong i'm ready to go and I, I really want this right now so if you did say green light i'm very happy for you and i encourage you to look for a local church or look for people who are also on fire for god and learn from them read your bible try and do stuff like that if you're yellow light i want to put a sense of urgency in you you might be saying and i said this as well i want to get some things straight before i come to god god does not want you to get everything right before you come to him because if you try to do that you will never be perfect he wants you to come as you are so that he can accept you and he can cleanse you and he can make you whole eternity is a long time to be wrong and it's a long time to be guessing so if you have the chance if you're listening right now if you hear what i'm saying then i feel like you should i believe that you should make that decision that you should make that choice that you should come with all your burdens all your sins lay them before god and he is faithful and just to forgive imagine uh you're on a plane and they give you a parachute they tell you that parachute has a 80 percent chance of, of of actually working right would you jump out would you take that leap and you know there's a 20 percent chance that it won't open but there's an 80 percent chance that it might open would you take that leap with that parachute I, I'm sure you wouldn't. I, I would definitely not use that parachute. But now you're saying that you have this parachute on, like like your own belief of where you're going after you die. You say 80% chance, 1995. It's not 100. And you're willing to make that jump. You're willing to make that jump, meaning you're willing to continue living your life the way that you're doing, knowing that 95% of the chance it might open and there's a 0.5% chance that that parachute won't open and that when you die, you go straight to hell. Are you willing to make that jump imagine imagine you're in a fire in the house fire breaks out in your house and you burn to the to, to a crisp but you're still alive there is a physical change in you that you will never come out the same you might not even walk the same you might not move the same that is the same way we are when we encounter jesus christ do not deceive yourself and say okay i accept what you're saying and i believe what you're saying and i'm going to you know live out what you're saying there's going to be a marked change in your life when people see you when people notice you they will see that this person has changed you don't want to be that person saying yellow light or green light that comes to god on the last day and he says i never knew you this is ranting on and on but this is the end of the video for people who are interested i'm so glad that you are able to watch all the way to this point and if you're making that leap to join to to, to follow jesus um i'm praying for you and um I, i'm telling you that you've made the best decision you ever made in your life that our purpose is not just to come here and make money and do all these things because it's all vanity <laughs> if you had cancer at this moment stage four you are dying in three days all those things would not matter but there's something that matters regardless of your your position in life and that is what jesus has done for you and what jesus promises you in eternity yeah. can you guys like oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> who are these people bro hey you got that do we uh Okay, here's the No, you don't have a story. No. What? 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 Good night. Good night. I said goodnight to y'all like three times. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, third time's the charm, baby. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> nah, you did it too late. Hey. hey. Alright, bye y'all. Drive well, please. I'll let y'all know when we're home. Please look on the road, don't look at me. <laughs>
<laughs> what? What? <laughs>